Good morning everyone, um, Daily Bible reading, Ruth chapter 2. We've seen in Ruth chapter 1 that uh, Elimelech and his family went to Moab because of a famine. We've seen that Elimelech, uh, his two sons, married Moabite women uh, in a way that wasn't entirely in accordance with what the Deuteronomic law tell, told them to. But in any case, these two women were obviously quite good women and they, uh, whenever they two sons of Elimelech and Naomi died, Elimelech having already died, then the two daughters-in-law are obviously affectionate towards their mother-in-law, but one of them obeys their mother-in-law, goes back to their parents' house. Uh, the other one, Ruth, stuck with her. And these two women, unaccompanied women, poor women, arrive back in Bethlehem, Judah, in a society which is extremely unwelcoming for women. Um, and they are busted and broke, so Ruth goes off to glean in a full area. The start of the barley harvest, Ruth goes off to glean in a field close to Bethlehem. Judah gleaning is the way in which the uh, Old Testament law makes provision for the very poor and destitute that the reapers shouldn't reap right into the corners of the field if they drop a ear of corn or two then they should leave it on the ground so that poor people can come and clean the field they can clean it off the leavings and the bits and the edges of the the field so that at least they will have something to eat so off Ruth goes and she does this and she comes it says by uh, her hap was to light in a part of a field belonging onto Boaz that is to say her providential direction was to go to a part of the field called Boaz. This is all obviously part of God's plan for Ruth and for Naomi and for Boaz and for the uh, for the ancestry of the great King David and through David the ancestry, human ancestry of Christ. What does this say to us? It says that some parts of the law were being kept. Uh, they weren't reaping into the corners of the field. They weren't picking up the stuff that they dropped that they were in fact leaving as they were meant to the uh, the leavings of a field's harvest to the poor and it says that other parts of the law were not being observed the law said that um, certain relatives certain relations male relations should marry widows uh, who were closely related whose husbands were closely related to them so that they would raise up heirs uh, for their kinsmen so that the woman would not be left destitute. This was a very unfriendly society for women indeed. Um, so there was actually provision in the law for the support uh, of widows and for the for the raising up of heirs for uh, for dead men. And that doesn't seem to be carefully observed here at all. In fact, it isn't Boaz's fault in this case. Boaz isn't the redeemer. He is not the one who is closest in relation to Elimelech. He is uh, second in line, it seems. He, uh, later on, he goes and talks to the one who ought to have taken responsibility for Ruth and for Naomi. This is God's word. Ruth chapter 2. And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband. A mighty man of wealth of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabites said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers, and her hap was to light on a part of the field belonging unto Boaz, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem, and said unto the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless thee. Then Boaz said unto his servant that was set over the reapers, Whose damsel is this? And the servant that was set over the reapers answered and said, It is the Moabitish damsel that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. And she said, I pray you let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and hath continued even from the morning until now that she tarried a little in the house. Then said Boaz unto Ruth, Hearest thou not, my daughter? Go not to glean in another field, neither go from hence. But abide here fast by my maidens. Let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap, and go thou after them. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? And when thou art athirst, go unto the vessels, and drink of that which the young men have drawn. 
Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes that thou shouldst take knowledge of me, seeing as I am a stranger? And Boaz answered and said unto her, It hath fully been showed me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband, and how thou, thou hast left thy father and thy mother and the land of thy nativity, and are come unto a people which thou knewest not heretofore. The Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust. Then she said, Let me find favour in thy sight, my Lord, for that thou hast comforted me, and for that thou hast spoken friendly unto thine handmaid, though I be not like unto one of thine handmaids. And Boaz said unto her, At mealtime, come thou hither, and eat of the bread, and dip thy morsel in the vinegar. And she sat beside the reapers, and he reached her parched corn, and she did eat, and was sufficed, and left. And when she was risen up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, let her glean even among the sheaves, and reproach her not. And let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her, and leave them, that she may glean them, and rebuke her not. So she gleaned in the field until even, and beat out that she had gleaned, and it was about an ephah of barley. And she took it up and went unto the city, and her mother-in-law saw that she had gleaned, and she brought forth and gave to her that she had reserved after she was sufficed. And her mother-in-law said unto her, Where hast thou gleaned today? And where wroughtest thou? Blessed be he that did take knowledge of thee. And she showed her mother-in-law with whom she had wrought, and said, The man's name with whom I wrought today is Boaz. And Naomi said unto her daughter-in-law, Blessed be he of the Lord, who hath not left off his kindness to the living and to the dead. And Naomi said unto her, The man is near of kin unto us, one of our next kinsmen. And Ruth the Moabites said, He said unto me also, Thou shalt keep fast by my young men, until they have ended all my harvest. And Naomi said unto Ruth her daughter-in-law, It is good, my daughter, that thou go out with his maidens, that they meet thee not in any other field. So she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz to glean until the end of the barley harvest and the wheat harvest, and dwelt with her mother-in-law.